Hey everybody, so in today's video we're going to be talking about some basic Power Apps principles that you, everyone needs to know. Um, if this is your first day using Power Apps, if you're really new, this will hopefully help you out. I'll be talking about some of the basic things that everyone needs to know. There's a lot of videos out there. Um, some of them are pretty advanced, so if you don't know this stuff, then you'll be kind of lost when you're watching those videos. So I thought I'd make a little video to get you started. So first off, I'm going to be talking about three different ways that you can create a Power App. Um, first, you can create what's called a Canvas App, and that is basically starting from blank. It just gives you a blank screen, there's nothing on it, it's not connected to anything. Uh, you can also do a model-driven app, and that is kind of like a sort of maybe like a template or a, it's coming from data. I've never really used those, don't really know. Um, when I'll ever need to use one. So the other way is to start from data. So if I wanted to, I could start with uh, data from Excel, from SharePoint, from SQL, whatever I want. I can also go to a SharePoint list. I'll need to make sure it's a modern list. I can go Power Apps is um, in my site. Then I can go to Power Apps create an app or create a form and I'll I have another video on forms um, but if you hit create an app it's just gonna basically create an app that links this list data to your app already um, but all of these things you can do starting from a blank app if you want you can really do all of them but the form app is a little different and I'll be going over that in another video so first we're just gonna go to our blank app we'll call this Demo. and you can choose phone or tablet as you can see the tablet is <coughs> or a tablet it's a little wider um, if you view it on your phone it's going to be sideways uh, then there's also a phone view and for usually all my apps are phone apps but tablet is better for demonstrating things so I'll do tablet it's going to take you to this loading screen and takes a little bit, but eventually it'll load. So this is your basic Power App screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking about this left side, this top ribbon, and the right side and seeing what each part of Power Apps does. And there's lots of other different little things. I'm just going to be going over the basics. Um, but basically, to start off, we have screen one. This is going to be where we can see all our different controls, all our different things we're adding onto Power Apps. You can click over here to reference them. Um, for example, that's basically all that really does. You have this app, and that's going to say on start. Um, you can start a function. This is kind of like Excel. Power Apps actually. Uh, has lots of different functions that are similar to Excel. So if you have Excel experience, it's going to be really helpful. But there's lots of functions that are not um, in Excel. But let's see, on start is the only function you can really do when you click on the app. So whenever the app starts, you can do a function. Uh, you have your screen. So notice how whenever I click on the screen, it's going to switch. You now I have all these options. I have the background image, loading, spinner, on visible. And that's basically that. Um, on this front tab, I have file. I can change my app name, the icon, the color. I can actually change it back to the phone layout if I want. Uh, I can change all these different settings. If I go over here I can click on insert and this is basically the main place where you're going to be. You can insert a screen, has the power apps with lots of different screens you can insert and that basically pre-populates your screen with some controls and functions that kind of get you started. Uh, you can do a label, it just shows text, buttons, these are different types, types of text inputs. HTML text, you can do a pen input, two different controls, and notice there's a lot of different controls, there's different galleries, data tables, forms, media, you have image, camera, video, all different things. 
and you even have charts kind of like Excel. Um, you also have a list of icons you can insert there too. And those are sort of similar to buttons, but not as customizable maybe, but they look better than buttons sometimes. So uh, let's see, if I insert, for example, a button, give me a little blue button, and I'll insert the text input. So it kind of has a default setting. You can see the default setting for text input is going to be this. And notice how text input 1 came up here, gave it a name, button came here, also gave it button 1. So I can rename mine, that's a really good idea, because when you start getting tons of different controls on here, you want to rename maybe this screen, you can rename, if you just double click, you can name it multiple screen, you can name text input 2, usually I do EI for text input, um, and whatever it's talking about, so like name or something like that. Uh, I won't go, I won't rename every single thing I put up here, but you can also for example, when I put this text input over the button, you can see how it covers the button. And that's because the text input is above the button over here on the left side. So when I go over to these ellipses, I can click here, I can copy the control, rename it, uh, I can align it. This is actually very helpful. I didn't learn that till later, but it's super helpful. You can align it different areas different places, different ways. You can also be a control. You can select multiple controls and you can actually, you go to the home tab, align, you can align at center so they all kind of line up. It's hard to see because the buttons go inside. Let me see if I can. You can align all those differently like that. Looks a little better when you have different things going on, but it does come in handy. Um, so, also, you can reorder things. If I click on my text input again, go over here, reorder it, and I'll send it backwards. I can either send it backwards one space or send it to the back. In this case, since we only have two controls, it's just going to go back one. So now when I slide this over, notice how the button is on top. So that's something to remember. Lots of times this button course wouldn't be clickable if I click it. Now I can click the button, but if I reorder it I bring the text input to the front, now if I was in the app and I tried to click the button, it would just click in this text input. Unless, I mean, I could click that little sliver of it, but that's something to remember that's important with building your power apps. Um, in this home screen, it's kind of like Reminds me a word. You can actually choose different themes for your app. It'll change the colors of everything. You can change the font, center things, all that. So, but everything um, you can do over here, besides the theme, is when you're clicking on a control, it has these properties panels. So now we're looking over here and it has different. Um, properties that you can just customize. You can also customize them if you click on this down arrow. So I got the text input selected. Go over here, click on the down arrow. Let's say I want the color. Now depending on the control, color can mean like the color of the icon or whatever it is, but when you're clicking on something with text, generally that means the text color. Um, so I can change the color here, I can do a RGBA, change the color there, or Power Apps is pretty cool, you can just type in green, and I'll give you different green options, because now the text input is green. But I can also go over here to my properties, scroll down a little bit, go to my color, and I can click color, and it'll bring me here, or I can do change the text color here, I can do custom, or I can change the fill, do that as well. So, whatever you want. Um, there we go. The button uh, has a little bit different properties. You can have its display mode be view, that means you can't 
click the button even though you can see it you can have it be disabled which you can't click it either um, but it kind of gives you that you know gray color like you can't click this button right now if it's in edit mode that means you can click it and buttons have a cool thing it has something called on select and when you click a button you can invoke an action that's default is uh, set the faults right now but if I wanted to I could maybe set a variable go to a different screen uh, so let's do that right now actually go to new screen and I'll just do another blank screen it's going to give me another name of my screen click on this one and go back here so something that really confused me at the beginning with Power Apps was the functions and how they work like when you put a period, when you put a comma, all those different things. And usually you kind of just learn as you keep using them. But there's also a reference in Power Apps, and I'll put a, a link in this video to that. But usually um, you just kind of got to memorize it, and it'll kind of help you a little bit usually, which is nice. But for example, if I wanted to have my user click this button, take me to screen one. I would type in the, nav and the function called navigate. Navigate. And normally, when you do functions, you're going to do parentheses, just like Excel. And when I hit nav navigate, it's going to give me some different options. And I can do target, my transition, and it's going to give me some other options after that. So it's going to say the target screen to navigate to. That's pretty easy. Just select one of these. I want to go to screen one would it make sense to go to the other screen then as you can see right up there you can do a comma and so you hit comma and that usually brings you to another parameter another kind of input for your function so first it was asking for where you want to go now it's asking for your transition so with this one you kind of just have to memorize this one too I'm going to do screen oh, transition and it's going to have all these different functions. So if I type in screen transition, it doesn't really say anything, but it kind of goes into a data collection or source for the screen transitions that are automatically in Power Apps. And when you want to dig into uh, like a table of something, you're going to hit period. So now I go to my screen transitions, I hit period. And that brings me to all the different screen transitions. So I can select cover. And if I wanted to, I could add some other things. Some other things I can do context. And that's kind of sending a variable or parameter to my next screen if I wanted to. So I can do parentheses. And if I want to test out my app, there's a play button up here. Also, just so you know, you have a redo undo you can share your app and this is kind of an app checker if i have any errors so if i had i took away this parentheses here gives me a little red error i can go to my app checker click on that i'll say hey you got this formula it's on the welcome screen if i click on it i'll say hey this is where it is kind of easy when you don't know what's going on usually it'll tell you like kind of give you a hint at what's wrong how you can fix it that's actually very helpful. So let's go hit play. Click my button. Takes me to my other screen. Click back. So there's that. Um, hopefully that kind of gives you guys a basic look over startup on Power Apps and how it how it works. Um, my other videos, I'm going over collections, variables, and galleries, and how you can show your data. Uh, it'll be lots cooler than this first video, so take a look.